Good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. It's good to be able to be able to sing to the Lord. You get, uh, you ever get tired of that? <laughs> you better not, because that's our liberty as Christians and knowing Him. So let's begin and let's praise this Lord of ours and let's stand. to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. So my soul praise Him, for He is thy help and salvation. All ye who hear, now to His temple draw near. Join me in glad So gently sustain it. All down unseen, how thy desires all have been granted in what he ordained. Praise to the Lord, oh, let all that is in me adore. Praises before Him. Let the Amen sound from His people again. Gladly for a we adore Him. Amen. Be seated. What a great joy it is to see each and every one of you here in the house of the Lord this morning. And it's our prayer, God's going to meet us and bless us as we gather together, for he promises where two or three are gathered, he would be in the midst. If you're visiting with us today and you've never filled out a visitor's card, would you just slip up your hand there for just a second, receive a card from these men, fill it out and drop it in the offering plate in a moment, and we'll be very grateful to you for doing so. Prayer time on Tuesday morning at 10, our Wednesday night's our regular schedule. Then Friday night is our Friday, uh, fourth Friday night picking here at Pineview, and we always have a great time uh, picking and grinning and fellowshipping together. So if you hadn't been, let me encourage you to come. It's a very informal time, and we have a great time doing that together. Let's bow our heads together now for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the privilege of being able to gather here this morning to worship. Thank you, Lord, for the rain you've sent to refresh our earth. Lord, I thank you for the beautiful trees and flowers that are beginning to bud out and to bloom, Father. Lord, you're such a great... God, and Lord, you love us, and we just praise you for that. And Father, I invite you to be a part of this service today, to tread the avenues of every heart, to touch every life. Lord, may something that's said here today, Lord, touch a person that if they're lost and undone without you, that this would be the day, Lord, that they'd get saved. And Father, I ask you to bless our speaker as he comes to share the Word of God with us today. Lord, may the anointing be on everything that we do here, Father. May your name be lifted up and glorified. Father, we pray for those of our fellowship that are sick today, those that are shut in. Lord, I pray for those that have lost loved ones in recent days, that, Lord, you be there to give peace and comfort to their hearts. For the men and women who serve so faithfully in our military around the world today, Lord, would you protect them and care for them. Lord, we ask you to bless Brother Wayne now and the men and ladies as they lead us in worship. Accept our praises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brother Wayne. Amen. Let's continue to worship our Lord. You'll turn to 336, and let's stand and sing. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Mm -hmm. 
There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains. Lose all their guilty stains. Lose all their guilty stains. And sinners plunge beneath the flood, lose all their guilty Polis brings stammering tongue, thy silent in the grave. And in a nobler, sweetest song, I'll sing thy part to save. I'll sing thy part to save. I'll sing thy power to save. And in a song I'll sing the power to say
song I'm going to sing for you this morning, um, I heard first by Joni Erickson Tata. Most of you are probably familiar with her. For those of you who are not, Joni has spent the last 40-something, probably nearly or more than 50 years in a wheelchair due to a diving accident when she was a teenager and broke her neck. And in her testimony, she shares that as she lay there, totally helpless, paralyzed from her neck down, dependent upon other people to care for her every need, how she worked through all the stages in her grief and coming to accept her disability, but also the promises that God gave her to use her. And, you know, in our human eyes, we say, how could God possibly use me in this state? But God said, you'll never do it alone. You'll do it with me. I just need your, bo your body and your willing heart. And I don't expect you to do it. I want to do it through you. So as you know, most of you over the years, she's written countless books, um, has, is a public speaker, travels all over the world, and sings, and sometimes even with the assistance of her husband to compress her chest so she can get a note out. But she trusts God with all her heart and by faith she steps out to do what he, she knows he has given her to do. I can relate so much to Joni's story because one day I too was paralyzed and unable to do anything for myself and was totally dependent on other people and even machines to sustain life. But God gave me promises too of what he wanted me to do. So we step out by faith trusting him to take a paralyzed vocal cord and let it sing and a fractured crooked hand and let it play. I'm not sitting here by my power today. It's his power, and I thank him for that. So I want to ask you, is there something that he is asking of you today? And you say, oh, but God, that's just too big for me. I could possibly, never possibly do that. All he wants is your willing heart. He will equip and enable you to do according to his power what he, he longs for you to do. You know, faith is really just an outward expression of an inner trust and belief that God will stand true to his promises. So it's not only my middle name. It's what I stand on when I sing this song for you this morning. Whatever he calls us to do, we might do it alone, but we'll never be alone. I'm alone, yet not alone. God's the light that will guide me home. With His love and tenderness, leading through the wilderness. And wherever I may roam, I'm alone. Yet not alone I will not be bent in fear He's the refuge I know is near In His strength I find my own By His faithful mercy shown That so mighty is His shield all his love is now revealed. When my steps are lost and desperate for a guide, I can feel his touch, a soothing presence by my side. Alone, yet not alone, not forsaken when on my own. I can lean upon his arm and be lifted up from harm 
if I stumble or if I'm thrown. I'm alone, yet not alone. bound me with his love watchful angels look from above every evil can be braved for I know I will be saved never frightened on my own I'm alone Yet not alone. I'm alone. Yet not For many months last year, in 2014, our church was able to provide the space for the Gideons who are working in our area to do a Bible bliss here. And uh, we met some wonderful people and had a great time fellowshipping and working with these men. I've always uh, admired the Gideons, and this is our Sunday for Gideon speakers. And we have Mr. Lloyd Curum uh, from Brunswick, Georgia, coming to speak to us today. So, brother, come on up and share with us. Thank you. Why do you just give away these little testaments? This was a question asked by three students at the Cebu College campus in Cebu City in the Philippines. The Gideons was there, placing the Word of God in the hands of students as they walked out of each dormitory and educational building. These three, three students, as they were walking to the back gate, they were looking at the testament, and they couldn't figure it out. Why in the world would men just give away such a wonderful little book? So they stopped, and they asked the Gideon, why do you do it? Why do you just give them away? He invited them to open the book to the very front. He showed them how to use the helps in time of need. And then he invited them to turn over to the back page where the plan of salvation is outlined. He turned to the college girls and said, Hey, can y'all read? Oh, they got a good laugh out of that. They said, Sure, we can read. We go to college. So he turned to one girl and he said, read these scriptures out loud about God loves you. And she read John 3, 16, Romans 5, 8, and he shared a little bit about the love of God. Then he turned to the second student. He said, read these scriptures out loud, Romans 3, 23, Romans 3, 10. And as she read the scriptures about all her sinners, when she got through, she said, I didn't know that. I'm a good girl. I never get into any trouble any time. I'm a good girl. She said, I didn't realize I was a sinner. As these students was reading the scriptures out loud, people were passing by. They'd stopped to hear what's going on. The little circle of four grew and grew and grew, and after a while, it was a big circle. He turned to the third girl. He said, read these scriptures out loud about God's remedy for sin. She read Romans 6, 23, uh, John 1, 12, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, and then he explained to them, how Jesus Christ was the Lamb of God, slain to take away the sins of the world, and about how through faith in Jesus Christ, they could come to know Him as Lord and Savior of, of their life. After sharing with him a few minutes, he asked a question. He said, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? They said, oh yes, we do, we believe. One of the girls said, I would like to pray and ask Jesus to forgive me of my sins and to come into my heart. The other two girls spoke up and said, we believe also we would like to pray. Friends, what a joy it was for that Gideon to put his arms on the shoulders of those three students and lead them in the sinner's prayer. See, it was three more born again, not of corruptible seed, but of that incorruptible seed, by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. But you know, it didn't stop there as he raised his head. The whole big circle, everybody had their head bowed, and he looked out with amazement, and he said, 
Did anybody else believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Did anyone else pray and ask Him to forgive them of their sins and to come in their heart? If so, raise your hand. Pastor, what a joy it was to see 15 more hands going up, making a public profession of their newfound faith in Jesus Christ right in, in front of all, of all of their peers. See, friends, this is the only purpose of the Gideons International. It's winning others to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, bringing the lost to Jesus so they may have an opportunity to know Him. We do that through personal witnessing and through placing God's Word. See, I believe God has a plan. People need Jesus. Jesus is in the book. The problem is the world don't have a book. My friend Elliot Oswit, he, he lived in the foothills of North Carolina. He traveled and worked out of the home. He come in on Christmas Eve. He went to the front door and the door was locked. He knew something was wrong because they never locked their door. He beat on the door and said, Polly, Polly, what's wrong? Let me in. She come to the door. She said, you don't live here anymore. Go away. You're no good for this family. Elliot was shocked. He went and got in his car, went into town, bought some booze, got the pistol out from under the seat of his car, checked into a hotel room. As he checked into that clean hotel room, what do you think he found? That old King James Bible laying up on the TV open. He was so angry, he slapped the Bible off the TV. It landed on the floor, open again. Being angry, he kicked it under the bed. Tried to anyway. However, that bed was one that had the boards going all the way to the floor. He picked up the Word of God. And as he picked it up, his eyes caught sight of the words, My peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. When he seen that, he broke down and started weeping. He started reading the Word of God. See, Elliot had read the Old Testament before because he grew up in a Jewish home. He went to the Jewish schools. But now as he read the words of Jesus, he thought to himself, this is what I need, peace. Long story, long story short, after reading God's Word and with some help, Elliot Oswit prayed to receive Jesus Christ as his Savior. Can I tell you something, church? There are over 50,000 hotels here in our country with over 5 million rooms. And with the help of the church, we'd like to place a Bible in every single room. In the Word of God, in Romans 10, uh, 9 and 10, the Word of God tells us, if we'll confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our heart that God has raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made into salvation. The Gideons was on the streets of New York City. Every year we go, 250 to 400,000 copies of God's Word placed in all five burrs. There, North Harlem, Backgate, City College campus, the Gideons was unloading cases of scriptures out of the van. As they were unloading them, they were opening them up. Here come a man walking down the road. He got close. He said, hey, man, I know what you're doing. You got those little Bibles. As he walked up closer, he said, my name is Willie. He said, I got one. He said, I never leave home without it. And patted himself on the back pocket. The Gideon said, come on now. You don't walk around with a Bible all the time, do you? He said, oh, yeah, I do. He reached in his back pocket. He pulled that testament out. It was as slick as the front of my head. The Gideon said, wow, tell me this story. He went on to say, I've done some bad things. I got caught. I got what I deserve. I ended up on Rikers Island in a maximum security prison. He said, you know, one day some men come by with suits on. They had these little testaments. They said, if you'll just read the Word of God, you can understand that God loves you no matter who you are or what you've done. He said, I was at a low point in my life. I wasn't a religious person and didn't care about it. But, you know, I needed to know that somebody cared for me. He said, I got that little testament. He said, I started reading it every day. I couldn't believe it. It was an interesting little book. He said, one day when I was reading that little New Testament, I realized that Jesus Christ died for Willie. I got on my knees and I prayed and asked him to come into my heart. And as I read that little testament, I knew what I had to do. I had to tell other people about Jesus. He said, I'd go out in the courtyard. I'd take my little Bible and I'd say, hey, man, you're going to go to hell if you don't trust Jesus as your Savior. He said, man, I wasn't very popular. Could you believe that? But you know, he said, some people listened. And I had an opportunity to lead several to Jesus Christ. He said, one day I was in jail. The guards come up and said, look, Willie, you're up for parole. 
He said, I thought they were fun of me. I didn't think I'd ever get out of prison. But I went before the parole board, and they told me, Willie, we feel like you paid your debt to society. We're going to let you go free. He stepped back, and he pounded himself on the chest. He said, look, I'm out, I'm out. He said, not only am I out, I'm free in here because Jesus set me free. Friends, this is our responsibility and obligation as children of God to go out in the highways and hedges and tell people the good news. The truth is, everyone you invite will not come to your church. But it's our job to take the message of the church out into the highways and hedges and tell people what Jesus has done for us and invite and encourage them to come to Sunday school and church so they may better understand His love. See, in the Word of God, Hebrews 7.12 tells us, Wherefore, He is able to save them to the uttermost, that come to God by Him, seeing He ever liveth to make intercession for Him, for them. God has a plan. As Gideons were placed and distributed in the Word of God in 200 different countries around the world at an average rate of 250 scriptures every minute of every day this entire year. In fact, the sun never sets on the Gideon ministry. We're placed and distributing God's Word around the world in 97 different languages. Our goal this year is to place or distribute over 500,000 copies of God's Word here in the great state of Georgia, 11 and a half million here in the United States, and 87 and a half million worldwide. Wow, what a great time to be alive. God's Word, bought by the church, placed by the Gideons, over 1.9 billion copies since 1908. This is possible because of the commitment of God's people in the local church to see His Word go forth. Friends, less than 20% of all the scriptures placed by the Gideons are placed here in our country. However, God is using His people in the local church to provide more than 80, or about 75 to 80% of the funds worldwide. I had a chance to go to Santa Cruz, Bolivia. We visited over 200 schools. In those schools, never one time did we see a bound book. Poor, poor, poor. Every classroom across the back wall, a big blackboard. The teacher would get up and write the lessons. The students would write them down. We went into one classroom, told the teacher who we were. She said, oh no, 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 we cannot receive the New Testament. And as we inquired, she said, we have no money. Then, with a big smile, the Gideon said, but ma'am, you don't understand. God's people in the local churches in America paid the price for you to have God's Word at no cost. She stepped back and she said, I don't understand. She said, I've never been to America. I don't know anybody in America. How could anyone love me so much as to provide such a wonderful gift? See, friends, little is much when God is in it. God has a plan. He died. Jesus Christ died for these folks too. Thank you for what you do. We would like to thank you for allowing the Gideons to be a missionary outreach of this church. Gideons are local people, nationals in each country, men that speak the language, eat the food, drink the water, know the culture, and require no support. Did you hear that? We don't come to the church and ask you to support us. We pay our own way. We come and ask you to buy Bibles and to buy Testaments so people may have an opportunity to read and come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. We have around 76 different areas that we're authorized on behalf of the church to go and place and distribute the Word of God. Some of those are hotels and motels, schools, universities, colleges, hospitals, nursing homes, jails, prisons, uh, other correctional institutes, and the military. You know, friends, missionaries are not always people that cross the sea, but people that always see the cross of Jesus Christ. See, it's not about y'all. It's really not about us either. It's all about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For He is the one that's worthy. For He is the one that shed His blood to pay the price for all of our sins. But how would the world know if they don't come to the church and we don't take the message or send the word, how will they know? I had the privilege three weeks ago of going to uh, Indonesia, Yogyakarta. We placed over 92,000 copies of God's word legally in that Muslim country. What a joy it was to see people openly receive the word of God and say, I've heard about this book. I'll read it. Friends, there are at least uh, 101,503 hospitals and nursing homes here in our country alone. These people need an opportunity to read the Word of God and come to know Jesus Christ. 
while we were there in New York City, Jim Chastain and his wife went to a nursing home, going room to room, placing the hospital New Testaments by the bedside. Went in this one room. The man in the room, he said, yes, no problem. Jim gave him a little testament and started sharing about Christ. Jim asked me, he said, how old are you, sir? And the guy mumbled. And Jim said, excuse me, what did you say? He said, bless God, I'm 99 years old. And Jim said, wow, awesome, what a joy and a pleasure to live to be so old. And Jim got to talking to him about the Lord. He said, well, if you was to die today, do you know for sure where you'd go? And the man said, well, think I do. I've been a good man. Been to church most of my life. Never one time mentioned Jesus. The more he talked, the more Jim was concerned that he had never come to the point in his heart and life that he asked Jesus to forgive him of his sins and come into his heart. Long story short, Jim shared the scriptures. And at 99 years old, your missionaries, the Gideons, was there and had a chance to lead this dear brother in the sinner's prayer. See, friends, we consider it an honor to go out on behalf of the church, taking that message to whosoever will hear. You may ask yourself the question, how can I help the Gideons in reaching others for Christ? Well, there's four things you can do for us primarily. Pray for us. Your daily prayers for the worldwide ministry are vital to our ability to continue placing the Word of God. Pray specifically that we'll be faithful to go. Pray specifically that God will open the door. Pray specifically that the funds will be made available. Only 16 out of the 200 countries we go to can afford to buy their own scriptures. I was in mainland China. Outside Xing Quinn, seven to eight hundred U.S. dollars per year is the average family income. These dear folks could never afford to buy a Bible. Even if they had the money, they couldn't buy one because it's against the law to sell them in the bookstore. But by the grace of God and the empowerment of the local church, God's word is legally flowing into mainland China. The second way you can help is by joining us for service. If you're a business or professional man, supervisor, ma uh, a manager, military, civil servant, or retired from any of these fields, I'd love to have you talk with me after the service about becoming a Gideon. Now, most people think Gideons are just men to come speak in the church. Truth is, only one out of every ten Gideons would do that. But we need men that believe God's word is true and that providing it to the world is the right thing to do and men that's willing to pray for us. So please, see me after the service. The third way you can help is by utilizing the Gideon Card program. Statistics tells us one Bible placed in a hotel or motel in the USA has the reasonable potential to reach up to 2,300 different people over the life of that one Bible. People like this young lady right here. She wrote her testimony on the back cover of this Bible. She said, to whom it may concern, I rented this room with the thought of killing myself. This Bible saved my life. Proverbs, page 696. Pregnant by another man, I have a loving husband, yet I was so unfaithful, so foolish, so young. We all have problems. I just called my husband. He now knows and forgives. Signed, gratefully me. This book is blessed. See, friends, as you utilize this program, as you give a card, we'll send the word. As we send the word, God will change lives. In your bulletin today, there's a brochure that tells you more specifically how you can make a difference through this program. Uh, so please, take this home with you and prayerfully consider using this. God will bless you as a result of it. The fourth way you can help is by giving in a love offering like we'll take up today. Can I, can I just be honest with you? God don't really need your money and my money. He owns all the gold in the hills and all the cattle thereof. But because of His love for us, He chooses to work in and through us to allow us to be partakers with Him on sharing the good news. You ever thought about it? The master architect of the universe cares enough about you to allow you to partner with Him Sharing that good news. Pastor, I am continually humbled just with that thought. 
I am so grateful that He loves me enough to allow me to be a part. Praise the Lord for saving my soul. But praise Him for allowing me to be a tool in His hand. You know, the Great Commission is not a suggestion. I believe it's a command for all people to go and tell others. Today, I'd like to ask you the question. If you were to die today, do you know that you know that you know you'd spend all eternity in heaven? If so, it's only because you have prayed and asked the Lord to forgive you of your sins and to come into your heart. Because our righteousness is as filthy rags in the sight of a pure and holy God. We're living in a day and time now, church, where many people preach and teach, be good and do good and feel good. And that's all good, I agree. But the way to salvation is through repentance of sin and faith in our Lord and Je Jesus Christ. It's what He done on the cross, that perfect and holy sacrifice is what makes us worthy to be able to go to heaven. Think about it. Share this simple fact with others. Because of what our forefather Adam done in the garden, we were all born destined for hell. But praise be to God for Jesus Christ and His love for us and what He done for us because He's the way maker and He's the enabler. And he's made a way for you and for I. My question is, have you ever accepted that free gift of salvation? Pastor, thank you so much. God bless you for allowing us to be a missionary outreach of this church. May the Lord continue blessing the work of this church in the local community. <clears throat> what a wonderful challenge from the Word of God, and we would be remiss if we didn't give you an opportunity to trust Jesus Christ. So I'm going to ask our musicians to come, and each one of us stand. It's just as I am. We all know that. And this is your opportunity. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, would you come? Would you come trust Him? Just as I am without one plea. But that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee.